fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. Companion Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Lone Silver, let's go, big fellow. Lone Silver. The Missouri River steamboat Arrow was bound for St. Louis with a rich cargo of furs and gold from the Northwest. As she threaded her way through the treacherous channels in Dakota Territory, turning the muddy water with her side wheels and erupting vast clouds of smoke from her twin funnels, two men leaned against the railing on the passenger deck. Both were in their middle twenties, well-dressed and apparently friendly, though one was a United States Marshal, the other a prisoner. The Marshal was saying, Jeff, you ought to stay away from the captain's daughter. Why should I, Marshal? Well, I can't say it. I'm Jeff Gilmore, who broke out of the death row in a St. Louis jail and was captured in Fort Benton. And you're taking me back to him. You think it's right for a fellow in your boots to associate with a nice girl like Sue Kill? Sue and I simply walk and talk together. She's lonesome and seems to enjoy my company. Yeah, and she's taking a shine to you. I I don't want her to do that. I'll tell her who I am. No, don't. If it ever got out that I didn't put you in irons, I'd lose my job. I don't want to get you in it, Charlie. I know you don't. We've been friends since we were kids. Yes, but you don't know about my case. You were away when I was trying. Well, I didn't want to ask you about it, but now that the subject's come up, tell me. You know that Simon Dumont and I were partners in the St. Louis Fur House. Yeah. Well, Dumont is a crook. He got to buying stolen furs without my knowledge. I see. One day, a St. Louis detective came to the office to check up on Dumont's activities. Dumont stabbed the man with my pelt and knife and then fled, leaving me to take the blame. Didn't the St. Louis officers look for him? No, they didn't. Jeff, when we get back to St. Louis, I'll try to get a stay of execution for you. And an assignment to Dakota Territory for myself. Maybe I can find Dumont. The odds are all against you. You've never seen Dumont, so you wouldn't know him. From what I've heard, he's grown a beard and keeps changing his name. Oh, Lawman would cooperate with me and honey. And... Even so, you'd never get a delay in the hand of a jailbreaker like me. Public sentiment is all against me. Here comes Miss Carroll. Now, but you gentlemen look serious. Sue, the marshal and I have been talking about my future. <laughs> I hope it's not that, Doc. Still, you've never told me what you've been doing or planned to do. Well, uh, 
The marshal has a place for me. Oh, Miss Carroll, isn't that Rockport just ahead? As the steamboat whistled for the next landing, the Lone Ranger and Toto, who had been riding along the north bank of the river, pulled up. Close it, Miss Hello, there's the arrow. She'll refuel in Rockport. And look at bales of fur, her carry. The river pirates we've been looking for have made it unsafe to ship furs by smaller craft. They've become a menace to shipping from one end of this river to the other. Uh, how many flatboats have been attacked along here? Three. But all we've learned is that the fur thieves call themselves river wolves and refer to their leader as Loop, which is French for wolf. Ah. Uh, how it happened, gang never leave trail. There's only one answer. It uses only boats and hides close to the river. Mm-hmm. Maybe better we use boats. We shall from now on. We must try to clean up that gang and make the river safe for shipping before all trade comes to an end. Go to town, buy a canoe, and paddle downstream. I'll take Scout and meet you opposite the Clam Point Light. We'll camp there tonight. Oh, me savvy. Easy, Scout. Easy, fella. At Clam Point, it's where we see old fella hang big lantern on pole. The guide steamboat. Yes, that's right. Come on, Scott. Come on, Scott. Come on, Scott. It was several hours later when Toto, successful in his quest for a canoe, landed downriver and rejoined the Lone Ranger. As they discussed their next move, another canoe was beached on an island several miles below them. Its occupant, a half breed, jumped out and ran toward a nearby trading post, operated by Zach Milton. To all appearances, the post, which consisted of a store, warehouse, and bunkhouse, was engaged in lawful business, but it actually served as a den for the river wolves and a depot for their loot. Reaching the bunkhouse, the breed threw open the door. Two heavily bearded men who had been lounging inside leaped to their feet with drawn guns. One was Zach Milton, the other the pirate chief known as Loop. Zach was first to speak. Well, Leggins, what is it? Yes, yeah, in Rockport, loaded with furs. All good ones. Mink, Martin, and Beaver. Hershey's carrying a lot of gold, too. Gold, eh? That is interesting. Loop, can't we board her? She's taking on firewood and won't pass in until sometime tonight. Uh, nobody can board a steamboat that's running full speed with a current. We don't have to tackle her while she's running, Zach. We can ground her. Oh, what's that? We'll knife the light keeper on Clam Point. Then take his beacon lantern and hang it on a tree by the big sandbar. Oh, I savvy. The arrow will take her bearings from it and run aground. Oh, she draw about five feet of water. So we'll have to use canoe and flatboat to get onto her. We'll put out some shore the minute she grounds. Well, there are 15 of us, so the rest should be easy. But we haven't got much time. Leggy, run up the gang. Right. Twilight had deepened into a starless night when the Lone Ranger and Toto concluded a hasty meal and trampled out their fire. As the last spark died, Toto looked out across the river and stiffened. He must have Me not see Clam Point light. Should be showing now. Maybe air will come along any minute now. Without a beacon to guide her, she may be grounded or wrecked. Isn't that right? Into the canoe and we'll see what's happened. Uh-huh. A few minutes later, the Lone Ranger and Toto found the old light keeper lying at the foot of the beacon pole. As the masked man knelt beside him, Toto struck a match. Oh, what ail him? He's dead. Stabbed. Where's the big lantern? It's not on pole. And rope that hoist it gone. The halyard has to be cut to be removed. That means the beacon was stolen. I mean, not savvy that. Must be the work of the river pirates who intend to lure the arrow out of the channel. Come on. All right, jump into the canoe. I'll push off. Uh, get ready. Uh, which way we go? Upstream. We must stop the arrow. The lives of all on board are at stake. As the masked man and Indian drove their canoe upstream, paddling furiously against the strong current, the arrow put the lights of Rockport behind there after a long delay in loading fuel. Jeff, Sue, and the marshal were in the pilot house watching Captain Carroll and the wheelsmen work the clumsy side wheeler through the sandbars, snags, and rocks, which were a constant menace to navigation. Captain, the ship don't feel right. The current pulls should not be so weak. Maybe we're out of the channel. Lisbon, take a sounding. I just sound, sir. What's the depth? By the mark, ten. There should be 15 feet of water off the point. Sound again. 
As the yellow plowed on through the night shrouded waters, the Lone Ranger and Toto drove their canoe around the bend a short distance downriver. The Indian, who had been watching the south bank, exclaimed, Look, Tima Sabi, that beacon light. Very narrow. She's running toward it. That light's got her fool. Her out of channel. Better to the right. Faster. It's no use. Her soon pass up. I'll hail her. Oh, ahoy! Somebody's calling from the river. Listen. Oh, oh Did you hear that? Don't bother me, Sue. Lenchman, what does your line say now? I don't know. Stand up. Your old cross five feet. Wheel's been hard apart. Yeah. She's not swinging very fast. I'll have the fourth wheel reversed. I don't know. Stand Hold on to me, Sue. What's the matter, Dan? We're going to ground. Oh, 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 oh Sue, mate, what happened to her? I can't figure it out. There hasn't been any flood that would have built up a sandbar off Crime Point. The river hasn't fallen either. We'll get below, look for damage, and start shifting the cargo after. Is there any danger? None at all. I've run aground a hundred times on the Missouri. All we need to do is lighten the bow and reverse the paddles to get off. But it means an hour's delay. Look, Captain. They're in the companionway. A mash man. And an Indian. Back, Sue. Back so I can shoot. There, there, for friends. It don't look friendly to board a ship wearing a mask. If I didn't know those river wolves were too cowardly to attack anything except flat boats, I'd take you for one of them. How did you get here? My friend and I came aboard from a canoe after trying to hail you. We were afraid you'd drown. How so? We'd found the Clam Point lightkeeper murdered and the beacon gone. That's it out there. But you're on a bar a mile above the point. So the lake was moved. Who'd do such a thing? Who but the river wolves? Big as your boat is, they mean to attack her. Great Scott, you must be right. Mate, forget about the cargo. I... Break out the guns and arm all hands on the lower deck. Then stand by to repel boarders. Do it quietly, mate. Maybe we can surprise the pirates as much as they plan to surprise you. Aye, sir. Masked man, I'm a federal marshal, but I'm willing to listen to you. How many men are in the gang? Rumor that there are 15 or 20. Then we're outnumbered. I'll help the men below. Uh, maybe better me join them. Go ahead, Toto. Come on, Tom. Let's uh, go. How many men does that leave up here, Captain? Four. The wheelsman, young Jeff here, and you and me... Can we hold this deck and protect my daughter? Don't you worry about me, Dad. Fight your ship just like you did your gunboat back in 63. Good girl, Sue. There's a gun in the pilot house. Stay in there and keep it handy. All right, Dad. Nobody will get you if I can help it, Sue. Captain, what about the brass cannon that's mounted in front of the pilot house? Could it be used? No, can't stand it. There's a box of five-pound round shot beside it. But I let the boys shoot up all the powder on the 4th of July. Let's slide the box over to the rail. Right. Yeah, that's far enough. How do you aim to use these cannonballs? Yeah, drop them into the pirates' canoes and they come alongside. Five pound shot will go straight to the bottom. Listen. Yes, they're coming. I hear a relax. That means they're bringing up a flatboat to carry off their plunder. I can see them now. All right, get ready to fire. Besides the flatboat, which had been heard, there were half a dozen canoes in the pirate flotilla. The men at the oars and paddles wore the buckskins and moccasins, commonly associated with the fur trade. But they had blackened their faces with charcoal, both to disguise their features and make their skin less visible in the darkness. All were armed with tomahawks and knives, as well as guns. The lights from the steamer are reaching us now. It's time to close in fast. All right, let's go, fellas. Come on, you want... came into plain sight. The Lone Ranger signaled Captain Carroll. Cupping his hands around his mouth, the skipper bellowed. We didn't stop them. Keep firing! Their canoes are alongside now. Wheelmen, start dropping those cannonballs. Right. Here goes one. Hey, that's it for one canoe. But the blighter still done for. Coming, Jeff. The, the curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue. The steamboat arrow had been boarded by river pirates. As some of them leaped onto the cargo deck, they swarmed up the stanchions trying to reach the top deck. They were met by the Lone Ranger, Captain Carroll, and Jeff Gilmore, who knocked several into the river. One got a hand on the top of the deck railing and thrusted Jeff with a knife. Dodging, young Gilmore brought a gun barrel down in his hand. Take that! Oh, the rest are sliding back down! They won't try that again! They're having a hard fight below! We'll have to watch the stairs leading up here. Even as the masked man spoke, Zach Milton and a half dozen river wolves under his command forced the passage to the foot of the companionway. Rounding up the steps, they erupted on the top deck. The Lone Ranger fired one shot. One of the pirates reeled back, clapping a hand to his shoulder. With barrels almost touching, the Lone Ranger and the pirate leader triggered their guns at each other. The hammers fell on empty cartridges. Swapping his useless revolver, Milton jerked a tomahawk from his belt and sprang forward. The hatchet flashed downward, but the masked man caught the handle and warded it off. Then they were locked in grappling holds, which neither could break at the moment. The other pirate surged forward. The fighting was at close quarters, hand to hand. The guns were empty, and there was no time to reload. Jeff and the captain were forced to give ground. Soon they were fighting with their backs against the pilot house. Seeing their danger, Sue rushed out carrying a gun. Get back, you beast! moment, the pirate trader, made doubly desperate by the retreat of his companions in crime, broke away from the Lone Ranger, leaving the hatchet in his grasp. Wait, fellas, I'm coming! No, you're not. That tomahawk won't stop me! Maybe my fish will! Right on the jaw! Get him another! Wait! Take it! He's calling up! That'll hold him for a while. Mister, my daughter! Yes, I know. Got that pirate's buckskin jacket and cap for me. I reload my guns. Hurry! Meanwhile, Leggins had reached the lower deck with his companions and the struggling girl. Tuttle, who had directed the defense there from behind a barricade of bale furs, saw to and shouted to the deckhand. We've got Captain Carroll! Don't shoot! Keep her where she'll be in the line of fire if they change their minds. Hi, Sammy. What happened down here? They're too much for us. They were warned and ready. Our canoes have been smashed. The flat boats all right. Piling to eat. As the river rolled, battered and beaten, prepared to put off in the unwieldy craft, the Lone Ranger holstered his reloaded guns and put on Zach Milton's cap and jacket. Then he hurried to one of the coal oil running lights. He took soot that had collected above the burner and blackened the lower part of his face, while Captain Carroll watched curiously. What do you figure I'm doing? I hope to mix with the pirates until I can rescue your daughter without endangering her life. Look over the side. There's Sue. They're putting her on the platform. They're all getting on. And I'll go over the side. God be with you, mister. Swinging himself over the railing, the Lone Ranger slid down the tension. He reached the lower deck just in time to join the last pirate as they piled into the flatboat. In the dim light and confusion, his mask had escaped detection. No. Crouching low on the bottom, he kept his head down while Luke cut the flatboat loose from the steamer. We're clear of her now. You fellas on the oars. Get busy. I'll send it to her. Oh, you're safe. Oh, you're too busy. Let me swim back. I guess not. Hey, Leggy. What is that? I just missed him. What? I saw him. He was fighting a masked man on the top deck. Masked man? He couldn't have been one of the crew or passengers. Well, maybe he tipped him off about us. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. If Shark got killed or captured, it'll be bad for us. All the boatmen on the river know him and his island. You're right. The island won't be safe for us after the arrow gets off the bar. No. But we got to go back long enough to pick up the furs and money we got here there. That photo's worth the chance. If worse comes to worse and we get surrounded, we'll use the girl to bargain for a way out. All right, send those horns, boys. Meanwhile, Toto and the marshal had returned to the top deck of the Arrow. Captain Carroll told them what had happened and pointed to the pirate who still lay senseless on the deck. That's Zach Milton who runs a trading post on the island downriver. Maybe pirates hiding there. Maybe them go there now. That's how it looks. You got small boat and arrow? No river steamer carries lifeboats. It could get to shore before one could be launched. Yeah, what do you figure on, Toto? Our canoe gets smashed like others. Me want to go to island. Maybe friend need help. I can get the air off the bar and take you there within an hour. No, no, that's too long. 
Let me go to shore now. Let's go along, Marshal. How about it, Carlos? You follow me. Waiting, swimming, and running in turn, Toto led the two men to shore and along the bank to the camp where he and the Lone Ranger had left their horses. There he placed Scout at the disposal of the Marshal and saddled Silver. He was saying... Get you guys with behind uh, me. All right. Easy, Scout. Easy, fella. Here, me help you up. I'm making it. Uh, yeah, yeah. You ready, Marshal? Yes, Tuttle. Where's the island? Only mile or so. When we get that far, we let horses swim from bank. Island close to shore. I see. Now we ride past. Come on, Silver. Yeah, Come on. As the great white stallion and paint pony raced along the bank, a flatboat near the island's landing. Luke swung the tiller bar. Back water with your oars. We're almost there. A moment later, the bottom of the clumsy craft grated on gravel. Luke jumped out. Oh, come on, all of you. We've got a lot of lugging to do. I can't help. My arm's busted. Dig of your neck, you scum. You have to be put out. You two girls, you go where we go. This is only fault of that mask man. I had it planned for us to control the Missouri River. We've had a stranglehold in the whole northwest end. Now look what's happened. Just let me get hold of him sometime. Grimly watchful, the masked man strode along at their heels, following them to a low stone building behind the trading post. Loop unlocked and opened the door. A match was struck. Then a lantern flared up, revealing a fortune in furs and other loot from river shipments. As the pirates pushed on inside, the Lone Ranger made sure that he was the last to enter. This was the chance for which he had been waiting, and he knew that he must act swiftly. Snatching Sue from the grasp of the half-breed, he pushed her out of the door with a low-voiced command. Run, Sue, run. Before Leggins and the other river wolves realized what was happening, he whipped out his guns and kicked the door shut. Get your hands up, all of you. Hey, what in thunder's going on? He took the girl away from me. She's gone. He's not one of us. Get those hands high. Uh, we, we're all reaching. What do you want? Look, Luke. That isn't all soot on his face. He's wearing a mask. He's the masked man who got Zack. You spy. You I... come outside with me. The rest of you, stay frozen. The Lone Ranger intended to get Loop outside, take his key, and lock the door on the other pirates. Taking a cautious backward step, he holstered his left-hand gun and felt behind him for the door latch. Then one of the men threw caution to the winds and went for his gun. The Lone Ranger saw the move and fired. In that instant, while the Lone Ranger was forced to turn his gun, Loop rushed. I'll get you! Luke gripped the masked man's gun in one strong fist. His other arm was thrown about the neck. He was hugging the Lone Ranger close, trying to disarm him, while the others brought their six guns into play. The Lone Ranger saw one gun come up. He swung Luke quickly to serve as a shield. Oh! You hit Luke! You fools! Watch your gun play! Hold your fire! Throw down that masked man! Cut him to the ground! Luke's body was limp in the masked man's arms, but it still served as a shield. Then the Lone Ranger was surrounded. Hands were clawing at him from all sides. Leggins brought his gun barrel down as a club. It landed with stunning force on the shoulder. Drop your gun! The back window! Two warning shots streaked through the small back window to disconcert the pirates. Then the door flew open. It was Jeff and the marshal who burst through the door, while Tonto watched from the window at the other side of the room. The Lone Ranger broke free and quickly stepped to one side, with both guns ready for action. Drop the guns. I'm backing the marshal's play. Hold your fire. My hands are up. Be cool. Shoot. You can't get through that window, Tonto. Too small. Come around the door. Let me come. Give him cover. I'll collect the guns. You men got here just in time. Yeah, Tonto brought the marshal and me. Uh, we find him, Kim Sophie. Miss Carroll? Uh. Her at landing, waiting for arrows. The arrow's here now. I see a captain coming with his men. Good. We can load the prisoners at once. Who's that right, before? The pirate leader. His men shot him by mistake. Marshal! Is there anything left for us to do? Just watch those prisoners, Captain. Right. We right. have a wounded man on our hands. Dad, he's the one they call Luke. Yes, uh, hand me your canteen. Sure, Mr. The one I brought from your camp. Now lift up his head and I'll try to give you some water. I'll hold that candle where you can see better. What? That man. He, he's Simon Dumont. Do you know him, Jack? Know him. I've been sentenced to hang for a murder he committed. I'm in the custody of the marshal right now. Oh, James. My only chance to clear myself lay in finding him and getting a confession. I've found him dying. Oh, that's terrible. Oh, he isn't dead yet. Oh, he seems to be trying to talk. All right, uh, speak to him, Jack. Oh, Dumont. Simon Dumont. Do you know me? Uh, you... 
You're Jeff Gilmore. Tell these people that you killed that officer in St. Louis. Tell them I'm innocent. He's sneering at you. <laughs> sure, I killed him. That won't help you. You can't take me back to testify for you. Wouldn't do it if you could. Like to see you hang. Like to see that masked man hang. Dumont, you realize that you're dying? <laughs> sure. And you admit the murder? <laughs> sure. Good joke, and Jeff. Good j- <laughs> oh. Oh. He's dead. Yeah. And my last hope went with him. No, Jeff. He cleared you, even though he didn't know it. What good is his word that he committed the murder? Under the circumstances, it's even better than an admission of guilt made on the witness stand. A dying statement is accepted as truth in all courts. What? It's taken for granted that dying men don't lie. The masked man's right, Jeff. You'll get a new trial and an acquittal. Come on, Toto. Uh, the masked man is leaving. We didn't even get a chance to thank him. We all owe him our lives. He's entitled to a reward, too. You don't know the masked man. He doesn't want money or thanks. Do you know who he is, Jeff? Tonto told me. He's the Lone Ranger. <laughs> This is a feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brady.